Lawrence Taylor, better known as LT, is arguably the best defensive player of all time. But did you know about his insane life off the field? Lawrence Taylor drank 41 beers on his draft night after he got picked number two overall. He snorted mountains of booger sugar before games, claimed he played at about 75% and still was one of the most dominant linebackers in NFL history. LT smoked crack, sent prostitutes to opposing running backs the night before games, routinely borrowed his teammates' piss to pass drug tests, once showed up to practice wearing fuzzy handcuffs and appeared on Dancing with the Stars? And that's not even the craziest shit he even did. Get in. We're about to dive into LT's insane antics off the field, and that's coming up right after this. I'm back. You ever get in a good workout and the first thing you do is stuff your face with junk? What's the point of working out if you're gonna eat like crap? That's where Factor comes in. High quality pre-made meals ship right to your door that are low calorie and fit any diet. Keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, even vegan. Stop ruining your workouts by eating trash. Plus there's no prep. Put them in the microwave and they are ready to go. And they taste great, trust me on this. Save the energy of diet planning, meal prep, and cooking for your workout where it matters. So after this video, head to go.factor75.com slash 5points120 and use code 5points120 to get $120 off your first five weeks of meal. Again, that's go.factor75.com slash 5points120 from the link below and use code 5points120 to get $120 off over your first five weeks of meals. Lawrence Taylor's college days at UNC Chapel Hill went more or less without incident. He played with reckless abandon on the field, but off it, kept his nose clean. That all changed the day Lawrence Taylor was drafted. Taylor was the second overall pick of the 1981 NFL Draft. For those curious, the Saints opted for running back George Rogers, a three-time Pro Bowler. It should have been a moment Taylor would never forget, but of course, he doesn't remember a damn thing. According to Taylor, he downed 41 beers on draft day, blacking out before Big Blue used their second overall pick on the Phenom linebacker. Take us back to your draft day. What do you remember from the day that you were drafted? Don, I don't remember too, uh, too much. I had 41 Coors Light, so I couldn't tell you. I mean, we've all been there, right? It should have been a concerning omen when Taylor immediately changed his number from 98 to 56 in the NFL. On the surface, that's not exactly noteworthy. But Taylor made the change to 56 to honor his idol, Cowboys linebacker Thomas Hollywood Henderson. Hollywood Henderson was a pro bowler, a Super Bowl champion, and a maniac off the field. On the morning of Super Bowl 12, Henderson's breakfast included a fine white powder and not the stuff you see on Frosted Flakes. Henderson had snorted his lunch in a bathroom stall right before the game, then inhaled dinner in the liquefied form on the sideline of the Superdome during the actual game. With the whole world watching, this guy. And he had a pretty good game, by the way. So when I say that this man was Lawrence Taylor's idol, maybe it was a harbinger of things to come. Taylor was a far better player than Henderson. LT hit the ground running in 1981, but something more sinister than Defensive Player of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year award changed his life. LT was at a party when he was first introduced to how should I say this? The same substance that got Hollywood Henderson through Super Bowl 12. It was the first time for Taylor and it sure wouldn't be the last. Over the course of several decades, Taylor would make a large contribution to the gross domestic product of Colombia, sampling their exports over and over and over again. By 1983, his third season in New York, Lawrence Taylor had graduated to the next step. His substance of choice was no longer in a powdered form. It was cubic, and he enjoyed an ounce of it every day. For most people like me and half of my audience, those kinds of extracurriculars would make basic human functioning nearly impossible. But for Taylor, he was able to thrive at the highest level of his sport. LT said that drugs did hamper his playing ability, putting him at about 75% while he was on the field. He also knew that his 75% was way better than most players 100% and he was goddamn right. Taylor later wrote in an autobiography that he made it no secret he was using the hard stuff. The Giants were also well aware, but the 1980s in New York were like Miles Teller hitting a garden gnome with a bat for uppers. At one point, the team even took out a $2 million life insurance policy on LT, meaning if he died in the middle of his career, they would have cashed in. 
And that wasn't just playing it safe. GM George Young told the team trainer that he'd be surprised if he lived past 30. It wasn't just the Giants that were enabling his behavior either. Taylor knew that if he were just some guy off the street, he would have been thrown in jail many times over. But because he was LT, cops gave him special treatment. According to Taylor, that sense of authority gave him a thrill and empowered him to keep using. LT may have been a raging addict dropped into the worst setting possible, but he had his reasons for wanting to escape reality. Taylor said he felt pressure having to play in New York, having to please so many people, and the peer pressure of having 20 to 30 Giants teammates who were also doing drugs regularly. Prior to the 1985 season, his fourth Taylor failed a drug test from the NFL for the first time, but certainly not the last. How did he make it that far without failing a test? LT borrowed his teammates urine until someone else's urine turned out to be dirty. Talk about a backfire. In the 1985 season, Taylor began drinking more than usual and at mid-season decided to cut back. Where did he fill in the void instead? Well, he doubled down on the old pipe. At one point, Taylor's wife came home to him doing drugs, kicked a door down to get to Taylor and then dragged the linebacker to rehab. Taylor entered a rehab facility in Houston where he was able to live clean, go golfing and free himself of the pressures of being one of the most recognizable athletes in America's biggest city. Sobriety though, never really took for LT, but for a year after getting out of rehab, Taylor was dominant on the field in 86. He had one of the best seasons a defensive player has ever had, 20 and a half sacks, defensive player of the year, and most impressively, he was the league's most valuable player, the last defensive player to win the award. But as good as Taylor was on the field, he was giving the Giants a competitive edge off of it as well. On the nights before games, Taylor would send special guests to hotel rooms of opposing players, instructing those guests to keep opponents up as long as they could. Doing what? I don't know. Use your imagination. Taylor got the idea when he was a second year player and someone from the Houston Oilers used that trick on him. <laughs> yeah, haven't we all just fallen for that? Of course, Taylor still got a sack in that game and the Giants won can't play a player. In 1989, LT showed up to a team meeting in fuzzy handcuffs that a few of his special friends had placed on him the night before. But hey, back in 1986, Taylor was a monster and the G-Men were certified juggernauts. The Giants went on to win the Super Bowl for crying out loud. Lawrence Taylor had achieved glory, but it didn't take long to fall back into drugs. In 87 and 88, Taylor failed drug tests again. The second one ended up costing him four games at the start of the 88 season, and that was enough to keep him clean for the time being at least. LT, according to LT, stayed clean for the rest of his playing days, but his mind never strayed too far from the freedom he would be granted after retirement. Taylor wrote that, I saw the white stuff as the only bright spot in my future. Jeez. The Giants and Taylor reached another Super Bowl, and when Scott Norwood's kick sailed wide right, he earned his second ring. LT retired in 1994, and he wasn't just a lock at Hall of Famer, he was considered by many to be the greatest defensive football player to ever walk the earth. Oh, and one day, just one day after Taylor's final game, he put down the cleats and picked up the old crack pipe like a 50s dad coming home from a long day working at Sears. The rest of the 90s were a complete blur for Taylor. Without the NFL watching over him, he was free to partake in numerous extracurriculars. In 1996, he was so deep into doing drugs that his wife divorced him and he was arrested for buying flour that tasted like cocaine in South Carolina. Taylor's home turned into a den of sin. He was spending $1,000 a day on extracurriculars and special guests, and he said he didn't want to know anyone who didn't look like a cast member in a Snoop video. You might be wondering, with that many special guests, how did Taylor avoid special diseases? Well, all it takes is one simple trick, a strawberry penicillin milkshake that Taylor claims kept his junk clean as a whistle. Did we really need to know that? By the time he was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1999, Taylor once again appeared to have cleaned up his act. The 2000s were a time of renewal for LT. He dropped partying and picked up golf, started a business, and even appeared on Dancing with the Stars. And then this happened. Taylor was arrested for having a special guest who was, let's just say, younger than 18. According to Taylor, the girl told him she was 19. Come to find out the girl was a 12 year old runaway. The woman was then represented by famous attorney Gloria Allred, and Taylor pled guilty. Ultimately, the court ruled favorably for Taylor, who was sentenced to just six years of probation. 
His lawyer simply stated, that's just LT being LT. I mean, haven't we all been there? To which the judge replied, you know what? I have been there. No, that did not have. Did y'all believe that? Taylor has more or less laid low since then. There was a domestic violence situation in 2016 where Taylor was the victim. And that same year, Taylor pled guilty after being arrested for DUI. So I guess those cancel out? Of course, when you look at his adult life in totality, that's pretty tame for Lawrence Taylor. He was a force on the field and an even bigger one off it. Taylor summed it up perfectly in 1987 when he said this. For me, crazy as it seems, there is a real relationship between wild, reckless abandon off the field and being that way on the field. Well said, LT. Well said. Hey, Sean, you better hope I never get back in there. I will kick your...